Kevin Hunter, The Homework Guy. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to share with you the contents of my book, Is That the Best You Can Do? I learned this question from the car business. I noticed car buyers use it frequently and I immediately wondered, why don't we ever ask ourselves this question? Wouldn't we change the outcome of everything if we did? Understanding the background helps, so let's talk about the last time you went car shopping. I'll be naive and assume the salesperson did a masterful job and perhaps you loved everything there was to know about him or her. That would be rare indeed. It didn't matter. Nothing they said or did would have made any difference when you sat down to finally look at the numbers at the bargaining table. You still asked that nasty little question that made the salesperson rather uncomfortable. Is that the best you can do? After the awkward silence and some fumbling hesitation, depending on how prepared the salesperson was for the question, the conversation went any number of directions. It didn't matter what explanations or defenses were given. Everyone at the table knew the answer to the question before it was even asked. What was important is that it was asked. This offer was not the best they could do. You knew it. The salesperson knew it. The manager knew it. People who weren't even there knew it. Everyone knew it. Excluding those extremely rare situations, the first offer is never the best anyone can do. They had to make an offer to find out how ready you were to do business, and they left room so you could feel like you won a little. What's equally interesting is that you had not done the best that you could do. It's a safe bet that you came to the dealership very unprepared. Even still, you puffed out your chest as if you're the only one who always does their best on the first try, and you piously threw that question out on the table. What did I say? You had not done the best you could do, plain and simple. Let me explain. There are tons of resources out there, including here on the Homework Guide channel, to help you arrive better prepared for car shopping. You knew about the gauntlet that car dealers put you through. Knowing this, you could have been better prepared, and you would have asked better questions, and you could intelligently spot a good deal when you saw one. But no, you walked out your front door on your way to the dealer and said, let's go see what kind of deal we can get. Sorry to say, you looked and sounded like an idiot every minute you were at the dealership because you were pretending you had done the best you could do. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. If you had a card to trade in, what was the real trade value? Did you know this before you came in? If you say yes, does a casual search through Kelly Blue Book or NADA qualify as research? Neither KBB or NADA has ever written a check for a vehicle, so their numbers are only approximations. Did you know anything about the selling prices of cars like yours at the auto auctions? What offers have you received from people who actually wanted to buy your car? If you are financing, did you talk to your own banker first? Did you come pre-qualified for a car loan? If you didn't do this, did you have any idea that every single point of change in interest rate on a $25,000 loan will cost you an extra $500 over the course of a 60-month loan? That's a big price for ignorance. Did you talk to your insurance agent before you went car shopping? Did you let them know what you were looking for and ask questions about gap insurance and other policy updates? Did you know your own agent was likely to offer GAP for $30 a year, or did you just buy the overpriced GAP policy that the dealer provided? Were the monthly insurance policy increases taken into consideration in your budget? Did you come in looking for a car with better gas mileage because you dislike the high fuel prices? Did you happen to be driving a car that is paid off, and now you're thinking about spending twenty to 50000 with monthly payments of 400 to to 1000 bucks to save a few bucks each month on gas? What about your credit history? Have you always paid your bills on time, used your credit cards responsibly, and taken care of other notes so you had the best possible credit rating the day you walked into the dealership? If your credit was a little tarnished, did you start working on repairing it months before car shopping? I could easily add a hundred questions to this list, leaving you feeling woefully unqualified to be sitting there at the dealership shopping for a car, yet you had the audacity to ask the salesperson, is that the best you can do? The deal you got, whatever it was, was a deal by default. Was it good in the end? Maybe, but how would you really know? Being fully prepared would have delivered a good deal by design instead of some sort of deal by default. This is the price of not doing the best you can do. I didn't outline this for the purpose of saying that you didn't have the right to ask the question. You did, and it's a good thing that you didn't accept the first offer. Here's my point. Why are you accepting the first offer or first attempt on everything from yourself. Have you ever finished anything in your life and then looked back at your efforts and asked, is that the best you can do? Not likely. If a nagging doubt about your performance was there, you swallowed it. You did a little CYA and moved on and you're doing it more than you think. I learned a great lesson on this subject when I was in the army. 
It was a hot and sunny afternoon in South Carolina. I was standing beside the track at Fort Jackson. I had just completed my last PT test in basic combat training. I was holding my side, feeling the pain of just having run the fastest time of my life in a two-mile event. My goal was 13.08, but I came in at 13.18. The last quarter mile had been tough. Drill Sergeant Smith came by to ask me how I did. He was an amazing soldier and one of my heroes on the post. I proudly gave him my time, knowing I had done well. Not bad. Did you puke? He asked. No, I didn't puke, Drill Sergeant. If you didn't puke, you didn't do your best, he stated. I started to explain myself, but he just waved me off. That's okay. Not everyone wants to do their best, he said, and turned and walked away. I realized then that you cannot possibly do your best unless you know what doing your best feels like. I had no idea doing my best that day involved puke. You have to practice giving your best every day in many ways in order to give it when it really counts. As I walked my drill sergeant walk away, I wished I had pushed harder, even if I had puked. It would have been much more pleasant than the bitter taste of failure I had in my mouth at that moment. Several years after experience, I was invited to sit on the advisory board at the Minnesota School of Business. The chairman of the business program commented that the college teaches the hard skills that students need to survive and succeed in business. He was describing the nuts and bolts and the how-tos of business. While I talk about many important hard skills here, it is not my central message. I'm not trying to replace everything you know about business or something new. I'm trying to help you understand something new about yourself. I am focusing on some of the difficult to learn and even harder to implement soft skills. These are essential soft skills that make or break you, your career, or your business. These soft skills help you get beyond your head trash, the frustrating and confusing mental traffic you accumulate in your own attempt to derail your success and help you apply your hard skills in a way you never thought possible. You will think differently when you ask yourself this simple question. Is that the best you can do to your daily life? The habits and observations shared here will help you ask the question with confidence and move forward with real purpose to get exactly what you want out of life. You'll taste the sweet rewards that come from following the advice of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. When you walk up to Opportunity's door, don't knock. Kick that bitch in and introduce yourself. Is that the best you can do is a question that builds confidence, adds conviction, puts a fire in your gut, and leads you to an amazing future. Let's kick a few doors in, shall we? Make sure you watch all the rest of the videos in this series because you will definitely get the best out of your life. I'm Kevin Hunter, The Homeward Guy. Thanks for listening.